Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable business intermediaries across the country. And joining me on this segment is Chris Springfield. He's the principal of the Atlanta office for Sperry Commercial Global Affiliates, Griffin Partners. Chris, welcome to the program. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Chris, tell us a little bit about your work and specifically, who are the types of clients that you specialize in helping? Yeah, so what we do is we uh, help clients across a broad range of industries. We're industry agnostic. Uh, when the owners are looking for an exit, they decide it's time for the next chapter in their life or they're starting to think about that. We work with them about how to position their business uh, for an eventual exit one or two or three years down the road to get the highest value or work with them for a more immediate exit, uh, doing some planning and, and strategies that uh, allow them to sell their business for the best value possible. And then we facilitate that process from the beginning of the valuation and consultation all the way through closing and transition. When most folks start a business, they do it out of the passion of the work that they do. And not as many think about the sale, eventual sale of it. So how informed are these sellers by the time they reach out to you? What kind of questions are they asking? Yeah, it's, I actually just got done writing an article about that very issue uh, because most small business owners, when you have Main Street businesses, they, they don't go into it with an exit plan in place. So uh, the process for selling a business can be a little confusing and overwhelming. And so, you know, that most business owners don't even know the starting point. They don't understand the process, how it's going to work, you know, whether or not their business is going to be required to be exposed and people or their customers are going to find out they're selling a business. Uh, so we try to go through that whole process and just make sure that uh, all of our clients are really well informed about the process. How far ahead should people start planning and preparing their business when they're considering selling? Well, ideally from day one, uh, but that rarely happens. So um, you, you want to, you know, a minimum of a year would be great um, if you can get two to three years. Because uh, there's just some things that happen in small businesses that are standard. Everybody does it. It's no fault of, of any business owner. Um, but those, there's a lot of practices that occur within a business that can lower the value of your business if you're not being careful about how you are set up. Can you kind of give us an insight into a couple examples of that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the things I try to explain to my clients is that when you are preparing to exit your business uh, and you, you know, most small business owners, they're the, the plumber, the janitor, the electrician, the marketing, the cheerleader, the HR. And when they go to sell their business, they say, well, I, you know, I work 80 hours a week in this business. My blood, sweat and tears are in this business and buyers don't care. They don't, they don't care how many hours a week you're working in your business when they're placing their value on it. So they want to see businesses that the owners are, more removed and have less roles to fill. Because when you are one of those owners, you, you know, you're not only selling somebody a job at that point, you're selling somebody eight different jobs at that point because you're doing everything. So we try to get owners to understand that even though it's an investment in capital and time, that bringing on key figures that will help you remove yourself from some of the menial activities that take place within the business really adds a lot of value to your business. So it's an investment that comes back to you in multiples because you always think when you sell your business, you're selling it in multiples. You know, there's people are going to say two times earnings or three times earnings or whatever it is. So uh, when you can add value, you're adding value significantly more than your the expense to get there. Great insight. So this whole series was inspired by the headlines the great resignation, people leaving mm -hmm. the C-suites wanting to own their own business. And a smart way to do it is, of course, buying an existing business with a, re with a track record. Uh, yeah. How is this, uh, that great resignation, how has this affected your market? Have you seen more buyers and, and how's that motivated sellers? Significantly. Uh, we are seeing a lot of C-suite executives that were either coded out or just decided that they wanted to uh, take control it's similar to what happened back in the recession uh, for those of us that were around for that uh, when a lot of people you know lost their jobs and felt like that was a, the opportunity for them to really take control of their financial future we're seeing the exact same thing right now and uh, 
it is uh, in a lot of ways it's affecting prices uh, going up. I mean, there are certain segments in the industry that are just seeing astronomical prices right now. Speaking to that, the elephant in the room, is this actually an okay time or even a good or opportune time to buy a business at the tail end of this pandemic? Well, I think it depends on what kind of business you're buying. Um, you know, like right now, what we're seeing is if you own a good HVAC company with, uh, with management in place and an organizational structure in place and, and significant profits and revenue, you can, you can almost name your price. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy. So people are placing value on businesses that weren't affected by the pandemic. So direct services, business, to business services, you know, those are the things that we're really seeing in high demand. Chris, what inspired you to become a business intermediary? To give us a little bit of your background and, and uh, how'd you get started? Yeah, so I had owned a, a bunch of different businesses throughout uh, Georgia and, um, and some in South Carolina over the years. Um, and uh, also was involved pretty heavily in real estate development um, and new construction, multifamily. And as I sold my businesses over the years, some of them I used business brokers for, some of them I didn't. Uh, when I used the business broker, I was tremendously disappointed across the board with every experience I had. It was, it was very unpleasant. And so I kind of just acknowledged in the back of my mind that there was a better way to do it. There was just a much better way to do it than the, than the brokers I had worked with at the time. And so when new construction started getting a little bit crazy a few years ago, and I didn't feel like I could confidently deliver on, on uh, budgets, I kind of transitioned into the other side of real estate um, and doing commercial real estate brokerage. And as a key component of that, I started focusing on business brokerage and just bringing what I felt was a different way to service the clients uh, compared to what I had experienced. Terrific. And Before I ask you my last question, to your point about that, Give us a give us a glimpse at what is this better way? Like, what should a, a seller that's considering selling their business and they don't know where to start or even how to choose a business intermediary? What is important and what is that better way that you describe? Well, I so I, I think what's important for for sellers to know is that there are many markets, many states, um, South Carolina being one uh, that they don't you don't aren't required to be licensed at all to be a business broker. You don't have to have a real estate license. You don't have to have a, there's no such thing as a business brokerage license. So there are some states where there are brokers that you, you just, I mean, you don't know what you're getting. I mean, there's, there's no regulation to it. The whole, the industry as a whole is very lightly regulated. So I think that the first thing to do is identifying that, you know, your business broker is at least licensed in real estate because there are some best practices that, that real estate agents are bound to. Uh, and, and making sure they understand the fiduciary responsibility and the difference between having a client and a customer and, and who you owe fiduciary to in those situations. So that is, is one of the biggest things that I felt like is making sure that you could bring fairness and responsibility uh, and obedience to your client uh, as a business broker, because I, my experience was that the brokers that I had dealt with were just there to get a commission and they didn't care what your business sold for. And there was no fiduciary to me. So that is an important concept. I think is to make sure that you are dealing with somebody that has your best interest in mind and is not just looking for the commission check. For folks listening that are considering selling their business and would love to speak with you or somebody looking to buy a business, um, how could they find you connect with you and learn more? So, yeah, um, we have two different websites. Our firm has an office here in Georgia and an office in Greenville, South Carolina. So um, you can either go to georgiabusinessadvisors.com or griffinpartnersc, as in South Carolina.com, either one of those. Um, you can simply Google us uh, through Griffin Partners, uh, Sperry Commercial Global Affiliates, Griffin Partners, and uh, should send you straight to me. I, I am in the Atlanta office, so if somebody wants to reach out to me, that's the office they should look for. Chris, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with my audience today, and I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, enjoy being here. I appreciate you doing it. That was Chris Springfield. He's a principal with the Atlanta office for Sperry Commercial Global Affiliates. 
and Griffin Partners. This segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.